I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry, it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be part of the lines. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash and sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. And the channel shall lead them to buy our merch. So the first song that we have on the list is For All Eternity, Break of Dawn. Yeah, now if you're watching this on regular YouTube, you're lame because we're actually doing this live right now. Live, live, live. And uh, this is a DJ stream. A DJ stream is when one person gets to tell us what songs that we're listening to. So we're doing a five song DJ stream. Five songs back to back to back from one guy. That would be DJ Florian. You see, happy him birthday. See him at the bottom there, DJ Florian. Happy birthday to the homie. And the first one he requested was for all eternity, Break of Dawn. Yes. This is the official video, guys. So if you are in the uh, stream itself, if the video all of a sudden dies on you, it's because the filthy capitalists shut us down. But never you fail because so, we're gonna keep going. He says. Uh, this is one of my favorite bands, probably my favorite of all time. This song describes what was going on inside of me for so long. Could have been directly from my heart. I hope you enjoy it. Much love. And having said that, the time has arrived. For all eternity, break of dawn, let's go.
daughter, you're not alone. I'm always with you and I will never leave you. I love you. I'm yours and you're mine. Never give up and never lose hope. So that that was that that was I'm pretty sure that was Jesus in the video. Just watch that part of you. I thought so too. And the light. Good song. Really, really good song. I knew they were going to be a Christian band because the name of the album is called Metanoia, which is Greek for repentance. Oh. Oh. Um, I so didn't know. And you know how I am about Christian bands. So they have to they have to get through a lot to get Perk, me in. What did Perk say? Christian Christian bands are usually very bad. He's yeah, <laughs> I mean, really. But this this was really good. What's wow. good, Applejack? Shout wow. out to the homie. Shout out to the big, the big homie, Applejack. Um, <laughs> this was Break of Dawn oh is gosh. the name of the band. Um, it, it appears that the probably the theme of the album is repentance because the the name of the record is Metanoia. Metanoia. Wow, that's so. For, which, I thought for all eternity was the band. Am I wrong? Yeah, it's for all eternity. And the oh, name I thought of the you said Break of Dawn Break was of Dawn. the. I might have got it confused. Okay, or maybe I misheard you. Um, wow. But yeah, uh, so I think this whole record is probably about repentance and, and how hard it is. Yeah, it's it was. <laughs> oh, there there's Perk right there. <laughs> I said Christian rock is bad. There are actually some solid Christian metal bands in my opinion. All right, mm -hmm. all right, Perk, you're right, you're right. Um, so I think this this entire record is probably about repentance and and that's probably the theme of the of the band of the record. Yeah, but the way they went about it, I really appreciated because you i didn't know i didn't have the insight that you had on metanoia so you know when when it started i was like oh no like is <laughs> the way that he's explaining his nights and how hard and difficult they are and not being able to break free and that sort of like you're stuck underneath and you're never coming to the surface sort of feeling and you know obviously we've heard a lot of songs like that but very few of them kind of like i'm being hopeful for once the sunrise i seek is moments from my eyes like knowing that there's something that's right there that's going you know what i mean there's there's a change or there's something that that's coming and obviously in the music video it looked like that's because jesus showed up right you know that was the game changer right well it, it's it's one of the the really interesting sort of conflicts of Christianity where there there's a lot of people that feel I you know I call it spiritual sociopathy that anytime you feel bad about something it's bad that you feel bad and because you know guilt or shame and an action you've committed carries with it negative feelings people people want you to not feel that as quickly as possible yes Oh, yeah. And so they think they're helping you by saying, don't feel bad about that, blah, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. But how far do you really want to take that? If my son um, punches a six-year-old in the face and takes her lollipop and he feels guilty about it, I shouldn't tell him, no, don't feel guilty about it. You are who you are. You were, bo you were, born, you were born a selfish person that punches people in the eye. So do you. Mm. <laughs> like... I think all of us know that that's impractical. Mm -hmm. So then, if that's the case, then what am I supposed to tell my son? Well, you say, well, you know, stealing is bad. Taking things from people that doesn't belong to you is bad. Assaulting people is bad. Especially you being a male assaulting a female is doubly bad. Because God made us stronger than women so that we could protect women against bad men. Mm -hmm. Not so that we could be bad men and use our strength to oppress women. So you, you tell them the spiel, and whatever spiel, you, every parent knows it, whatever spiel you have, you tell your kid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
I think most parents universally would much rather have a quick conversation with their kid than to punish them because it takes a lot of work as a parent to punish a child, especially if you're trying to do redemptive punishment, which is I want to change you as a person from the yeah. inside out, not yeah. just that you're you're doing X and Y thing to annoy me and I want you to stop, but mm-hmm. more I want you to change from the inside out. That's hard to do. It's especially it's hard to do if you like... You know, you know, if you have to put the kid for a timeout or you have to put them for, you know, oh, you, you can't do this, uh, this or that event. You know what I mean? Those things are difficult to do, especially when, you know, oh, 100%. we love family time and we're, we're all together. So, you know, if somebody has to sit one out, that's always difficult. So I, I tend to lean toward a <laughs> discipline that would right. be quicker, but that's not always the best for the kids. Sometimes they have to have some time to stop and think about their actions. Yeah, and and so I relate it to God in the sense of there are things that God tells you not to do that you do. And there's that whole conflict that you see in Scripture where Paul says, you know, I don't understand. my. And Paul is like, aside from Jesus, like the most powerful guy in, in, in the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. Like especially in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. And you, you see him saying, I don't understand. It was a pretty vulnerable moment. Like he says, I don't understand what I, I don't understand myself. The thing that I hate doing, I keep doing and the, the good that I want to do, I can't do it. And he, he gets to this point where he's like, ah, mm-hmm. like wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death. And then mm-hmm. he goes, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ who leads us to victory. Yada, yada, yada. So the point is, if you're trying to actually live the Sermon on the Mount, which is a, is, is a damn near impossible feat, you're going to screw up. Yep. Yep. And when you screw up, God is always there to forgive you. But the fallout of what you've done is still there. And so a lot of times when people say, oh, Christianity functions on guilt, I call bullshit on that. Because I'm like, no, everybody deals with guilt. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Everybody deals with guilt. It's just a matter of how you're going to deal with the guilt. And a lot of us deny it. We deny that anything bad happened. We start... Well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Correct. I'm no Hitler. <laughs> Correct. We can always point to somebody yeah. else. That's the thing. You know, Dory used to say that. You always point to somebody else. I said, well, yeah, a serial killer who murdered seven people could point to Hitler and say he killed seven million people. Mm-hmm. What are you looking at me for? Mm-hmm. Like, there's all these, these different ways of dealing with our shit. Yeah. Right? And And the most common ways to say, well, that's not bad. So then we come up with our own system of what good and bad is. And it just so happens all the shit we like to do is, is okay or good. And the shit that we don't struggle with, that's bad. Right, right. It's just like Christians, right? They'll go after the LGBT people. Literally what I was thinking. Because they don't have any gay inclinations, yep. but then they'll, they're will they they're greedy as hell. They're, they worship Well, I don't know if they don't have any gay inclinations. It's just that the pressure from the people around them keeps yes. them away from acting on any of those and so that's a safe spot for them to criticize because they're like well i'm not going down that correct (laughs) correct and not feeling guilt ever is a bad sign and what i've said about the way that guilt is supposed to function i say it all the time it's it functions like your nerves do Mm -hmm. so because we are creatures who like to do more than one thing at a time we end up in bad situations Mm -hmm. so for example I'm, you know, doing X, Y, and Z and the oven's on and the little thingy is full red because it's burning hot. And normally if I was focusing, yeah, I wouldn't put my hand by there. But because I'm multitasking, boom, now my hand is on this very hot surface. Mm -hmm. So my nerves are saying, yo, get your hand off this thing because if you keep it on here, you're not going to have a hand in five minutes. So I go, ah, right? And then the minute I pull it off, Now, what I do is I don't put it back on, right? What I do is I put ointment on it, I put air on it, I try to heal Mm -hmm. the pain that my nerves are causing me. Mm -hmm. But my nerves aren't bad for alerting me to the pain. My nerves aren't bad for hurting me. In that situation, my nerves were actually good. And they, that's also what pain is, what brings the white blood cells and stuff to the location of the injury. Right. That's why people that don't experience pain are in a lot of trouble, not just because they're going to leave their hand there, Correct. but also because pain is not working to, to send the white blood cells where necessary. There's already something wrong with you. Yep. And that's one of the, the worst things in the world, right? If you've had some catastrophic car accident, the doctor will poke you, they'll stick you in your, in your lower extremities because the pain signal means that everything is good. Mm -hmm. If the doctor sticks you there and you feel no pain, then the room gets really quiet. And there's a nervous look. And there's different conversations that happen. Mm -hmm. So when I look at my own soul, 
I'm multitasking. Most of us aren't. Most of us don't wake up today. And go. I'm going to really fuck shit up for somebody, or I'm going to really make life miserable for somebody. Nobody mm-hmm. does that. Mm-hmm. Most of us don't do that. Right. But when you go through life, it's just some people regular, do. Fuck you. Some people do. <laughs> When you go through life as like a regular person, like, yeah. you know, Jesus called it getting your feet dirty. Like mm-hmm. if you're in the world, you're just going to get your feet dirty. And that that initial pang of guilt is the yep. get your hand off. And that's what I tell everybody in the house. It's like the minute you, you feel that guilt, stop what you're doing and then stop feeling guilty. Mm-hmm. Stop with the, and when I say stop feeling guilty, what I mean is stop beating yourself up, stop, stop. You know, saying the narrative over and over again and recognize what just happened. Yep. That feeling in your conscience is simply your soul's or your spirit's nerve center saying, ah, something's wrong. Get off that. Yeah. When people wallow in guilt, what they're doing is they're putting their hand back on the stove to, to punish themselves. Mm-hmm. I deserve this pain. Right. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, obviously that's not what Jesus teaches, but... But we have to admit that, especially in certain segments of Christianity, that's how people take it. Mm-hmm. They take a bad situation and they feel guilty about it. And instead of just pulling their hands off and then going directly to trying to heal, they put their hand back on because they feel like they need to punish themselves. Mm-hmm. And so that's, you know, people ask me all the time, why did the death of Jesus have to be so brutal? Why couldn't God have just said, you're forgiven? And that's one of the reasons why. It's because... The reason that I'm, I am not like cavalier about bad things I've done or whatever. I'm not like, oh, who cares? No. But the reason that I say never wallow in guilt is because Jesus's body was completely brutalized and punished for me. So if I were to continue to punish myself, that's me saying to God, ah, that wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. God, God's like, yo, I gave my son in like the most brutal way possible. Mm Mm-hmm. So that when you get those pangs of guilt now, all you have to do is take your hand off the stove. Yeah, Don't th- punish yourself because Jesus has already taken your punishment. I think, though, that sometimes the reason... Pe- I think there's lots of reasons why people wallow in self-pity. But I do think that some of the reasons are they want to kind of force themselves to face what they've done so they don't repeat the <laughs> action. But for some reason, it doesn't work that way. Correct. Like any time I've ever like sat in it and faced it and blah, blah, blah. It it did. It, it almost, I don't know, for some reason made me feel more paralyzed to fixing Correct. the situation. Correct. Correct. No, that's that, that's that, and that's why I tell the kids all the time. Like we're never going to make a, a decision based on fear, guilt or ego. And it's something that we preach over and over again in the house because when you do it's that. It's super helpful. Don't even send a text message without going through those grids. Yeah. We had a situation just the other day and I was like about. I deleted it and let it go. Yeah. Well, you know? is it an ego text? Yeah. Yeah. And if you if you if you put your 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 worldview through that prism, it'll it'll really work. Yeah. I'm not gonna do anything when fear, guilt, or ego is the dominant motivation for yeah. why I'm doing what I'm doing. It was the dominant. And, and <laughs> for so, me. but Jedi brings something up. Guilt is good, but can we at least admit that guilt trips are bad? It depends. Right. So if, if I have a son who just murdered eight people and ate five of them and he doesn't feel guilty at on at okay, all, that's a problem. I, I might yeah. sit him down and say, you just took five people off the planet mm-hmm. yep. in a very terrible way. And now there's parents and sisters and mothers and fathers that have to deal with that. You're saying that's OK. You're all right with that. Now, he might come back to me and say, oh, you're trying to put me on a guilt trip. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm hmm. Uh, so from that perspective, Jedi, I would say no guilt trips. If that's what you're characterizing is characterizing as is a guilt trip. No, that's not always bad. However, however, if a person apologizes and they demonstrate by their actions that they're trying, and again, you don't you don't hold people to a standard of perfection, but if somebody demonstrates that they're even trying even a little bit, I would say a guilt trip would be. They apologize and they've already taken steps to try to reverse what they've done. Negative guilt tripping would be, how could you do this? It's like the person has already said that they're sorry and they're clearly taking actions that are different. Why continue to pound them with guilt and guilt and make them grovel at your feet, yada, yada, yada. That shit is horrible. Mm -hmm. And I would say, and I'm going to be careful here, but I would say a lot of times... That kind of guilting of a person, that type of psychological guilt abuse of a person, many times is more of a crime than the crime that the person who is guilty feels guilty for. 
So, like, that is really, really important. People use, I mean, obviously, religious people do that, too, obviously. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people utilize guilt as a weapon. Yes. Um, because not a lot of us have thought through the implications of what guilt is, why we have it, and how it's supposed to work. That's so, true. So if you're not a person who understands how guilt is designed to serve you, then somebody can take that that very important principle and use it against you to not empower you to become a better person, mm -hmm. but to empower themselves to have control over you. And obviously, religious people have figured that out. Yeah. And yeah. Um, have exploited <clears throat> the hell well, out of people for doing that. One thing that I will say is that the way that guilt functions and the way that we interact with it, it's it's very difficult. Oh, I'm speaking from within my worldview and obviously we're Christians. So the way that I've previously handled guilt and the way that I'm handling it now are two different things. Before I would wallow in it, I would think about it, I'd re and I would like tell myself what a horrible person I was because of this or that thing. And like, that was the self-talk, that was the language that was going on in my head. If somebody confronted me about something, I would just be like, yeah, I'm such a horrible person and blah, blah, blah. And it was just, dry. but there was no change coming from that. And so then, <laughs> I did what a Christian should do. I said, let me try this. And I said, all right, I was made in the image and likeness of God. And so I have value beyond what I do or what I don't do. And so I'm going to screw up. I'm going to make massive mistakes. I'm going to make small mistakes. My life consists of mistakes. But at the same time, at the end of the day, beneath all that, I was made in the image of likeness of God. And I have value just like every other person does. And we're all, you know, struggling our way through this life trying to find that light in a sense at the end of the tunnel and trying to find the the reason for our existence and obviously we find a lot of reason in the scriptures but it was it was really really helpful to me because i started feeling like i was the sum total of my screw ups rather than who I am apart from them. And so yes, i have done things that i'm not proud of. I have done things that i look back and i'm like, "Really?" But at the end of the day, we're all like that. If we're honest with ourselves, we all have stuff that we're like, "Well, i I'll do that one differently if I got another go around. 100%. Oh, let me teach my kids to not make the same mistakes. Wait, they're bullheaded as like I was when I was a teenager. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, we're all going through this life. <laughs> we're all going through this life and, you know, doing what we can. But that was, that was a big game changer for me because, you know, you know, let's say somebody says that, you know, you're a horrible person because you did this or that thing. Um, I then started doing the self-talk that was, well, it, normally I'd be like, yeah, I'm a horrible person. Then I switched it and I said, no, this or that action was horrible. But me as a person, I'm made in the image and likeness of God. So yeah. I am not a horrible person. Correct. So, and then when you can kind of make those separations, you can, you don't feel so emotional about the topic. You can say, okay, I can work on that. That's something that, you know, so I can make some adjustments there. Yeah. It, Hoyle brought up a good point where the hardest thing to acknowledge your own guilt instead of looking to pass it on. And I think that that's a lot. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. The hardest thing is to acknowledge your own guilt. Yes. Instead of looking to pass it on. Because a lot of people yes. who, who, in my experience, the people who love guilting people and making people hang out in condemnation are people that can't forgive themselves. They yeah. have no mercy toward themselves. And so because they have no mercy toward themselves, they can't forgive themselves. Yep. But they can't. They don't want to deal with that, so they push all their guilt and all their bullshit onto somebody else. I used to push so much of my mind onto you. What's good about this song is that he's Vin's fault. He's focusing on his own stuff. Falling through yeah. hell back again, no rest each night, I'm haunted. Like he's he's at a place where he's looking at his own issues. And this, it's so hard to shake. I'm so willing to change. What can I make in this life if I'm unable to break free? Correct. Correct. And again, I'm going to say something and, and you got to be very careful about this because some guys can can take and it's usually guys that take advantage of this. Somebody said if they have to say sorry again, they weren't sorry. That's just not how life works, right? Like, you know, for example, the alcoholic who's addicted, who hasn't got to the point where he knows he needs to go to AA, mm -hmm. tells his girl he's sorry, he'll never do it again. He finds himself drinking like it doesn't mean that he wasn't genuinely sorry. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. It just means that he doesn't have the power to overcome right. that particular demon. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I say I have to be careful because I can't tell a woman like, okay, you need to stay with him, blah, blah, blah. He's genuinely sorry, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes 
even when you're genuinely sorry and even when you make a genuine change, sometimes the consequences are there and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, but this is a struggle that anybody who takes their um, 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 Christianity seriously is going to have this struggle Mm -hmm. because and, and it's a lot of things like a lot of, you know, there's a sins of commission, sins of omission. Right. And so like a lot of us focus on. I want to be a good person. I want to do, I don't want to do bad to, to somebody, which mm. is good. But <clears throat> what about the fact that you're eating a chocolate bar from a company that, that enslaves people? That's a real issue. That's not a political issue. That's a real issue. Cause I, I'm in the house, I'm looking at my kids and I'm like, there are kids that are just like my kids that are in some sweatshop and I'm doing nothing about it. Right. Like, but, and, and again, I know it's not my job to save the world, but, there's so many, if you take your faith seriously, the type of people that we're called to be, you know, in the world, and most of us don't realize how selfish we are, especially mm-hmm. in the Western world. We have no idea how selfish we are. Mm-hmm. Americans can sit and watch the evening news, hear that we killed 30 innocent people and, and be upset because their show got canceled because of the Olympics. Yeah, I know. I was talking to somebody and I was saying like, We've already bombed more people. Like Biden has already bombed more now than we did when Trump was in, right? Isn't that what it, what it was? Or was it Obama or something like that? What, what's the numbers? It's damn near close. Right. He's gonna. But he's just he's, just he's just at the beginning of his of his whole thing. And the person was like, "What? Are you serious? There's been that many bombs?" And then, um, then because I said he's bombing all over the place, like kids are getting blo- all these different things and when i said that the person was like really and then after like a few seconds they were like yeah actually i heard that he's almost caught up to the other guy and i was like so it was in the person's consciousness but we it got care. pushed right to the back we don't care yeah because it's not uh, it's not, not their not kids good. it's not their kids so that's one of the reasons why i'm not bi- that's <laughs> that why i'm not a very big guilt person because i'm like whatever what, you what feel, does it do i what well, what i usually say is whatever you feel guilty about I guarantee you there's other things that you've done that God looks at as way worse. Yeah. And I think our apathy to other people's suffering is massively offensive to God. So you'll have an atheist gay person going, holy fucking shit, there are homeless people. And the atheist gay person will will give the last little $5 to that homeless person. Meanwhile, the the well-put-together Christian will not give the person any money, then justify themselves by pouring more judgment on the homeless person. Oh, he's going to use it for drugs anyway. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to go, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then 100%, they go off feeling 100%. completely self-righteous. Meanwhile, the atheist, whatever, is upset because they could only give $5. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I know, so, I know. So so there's a wider understanding of, of what guilt is, how it's designed to serve us, and what we should do. And... Um, <laughs> my father I think, used to, I think we Christians have not figured it out yet. I agree. My father used to ask this question. He'd be like, okay, so when you're standing before God, which is more likely that he would say? Would he say, you never, he didn't use this example. This is, but I'm using his uh, logic. Would he say, you gave to that homeless person and they ended up using it for drugs? That's a horrible thing. You're a horrible person. Or would he say, you, uh, you didn't give to that homeless person because you were afraid they were going to have it, use it for drugs. And so they ended up starving. So, I mean, obviously it's much, much, it's a much better conversation to say you were, you were too generous. Okay. And the person used it for evil. You know what I'm saying? Like that would oh, never yeah. happen. God would never say that. Yeah. But if that was like where it would come down to, it's like, obviously our generosity. And I agree with you. I think that, you know, particularly when we go to Starbucks, that's when I kind of think about it the most. I would say 80% of the time when I go to Starbucks, I think about like children elsewhere. Yeah. And I'm like, ah. and then I have like that whole dilemma. And then I ended up, I end up just putting it to rest because I don't know where to go with it. But it's like, you know, that guy asked the question when, um, P- Piper was talking about the Sermon on the Mount. He's like, well, I mean, how much am I supposed to give? Like, am I allowed to have two coats? Or, you know, what am I? You know, he started like nitpicking down to like the law of the thing so he could get some definitives. But it's, we're supposed to be just giving from our hearts and giving, you know, but then, you know, yeah, I mean, but- it's difficult when we're in America and we're not seeing the kids suffering around us. Um, we're just going about our life. And then, you know, 
you're scrolling through Facebook and all of a sudden, you know, I saw this child with a very swollen stomach. I, I, I just scrolled past it. I said, oh, I, don't, I don't want to think about that. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm completely with you. But, but And if you look at the song, I mean, obviously he's not, it doesn't look like he's talking about global issues. No, he's talking about his no, own, he's not talking about his himself. Own sin, yeah. But he says, I'm being hopeful for once. The sunrise, the sunrise I seek is moment from my eyes. And I know what that's like. Like when you're, when you're really trying to take your faith seriously, and we're not talking about like any of the BS about like, you know, hyper religiosity. We're just trying to like, I want to be the person that Jesus says I'm supposed to be in the New mm-hmm. Testament, right? Because almost everybody, Aaron Ra was the only one that I've ever met that's like hostile to Jesus himself. That's most true. of the time, most they're like, like, Jesus, Jesus is, is a cool pretty, guy. pretty metal. He's pretty <laughs> yeah. badass. It's a, yeah. You guys are just dicks. That's, that's the Honestly, <laughs> if you did a thing like Jesus' most metal moments, that would be ridiculous because there's some of the stuff that you will be shocked that he That's said and true. did. I, we should do metal that. Jesus, should, yeah, metal Jesus, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I understand why this is, um, you know, DJ's our DJ's one of his favorite songs because you you go through this kind of roller coaster and it, and it's hard to explain unless you're really in it. But when you're really in a relationship with God, like he comes to check you mm-hmm. and and. I say this all the time. Like, I would rather have two minutes of being checked by Jesus and win a Super Bowl. Because it's like, yeah. it's such a crazy feeling. Like, <laughs> I said to him one time, you keep talking to me like this. I'm just going to do bad shit so we can have these conversations. <laughs> you know what? Okay, this is this is a poor example, but it's the closest thing that I can think of. When you're a kid and you're at one of those game places where you have, like, your coins so you can use it to play the games at the machines... Yeah. And you just ran out of coins or you thought you did. And then all of a sudden somebody says, actually, hey, you still have six more over here. Yes. It's that feeling like you're wrong. You you had more. You were wrong. You didn't have what you thought you did. But it was better because you have six more. <laughs> so it's like he's always calling you <laughs> yes. out like there's more. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and, you know, Lisa talked about this, the difference between condemnation and conviction. Yes. And, and and condemnation is is this. It's yep. a finger point. It's you, you, you. And it's it's tearing you down. And, you know, <laughs> when 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 you're in relationship with God I, and you know God's voice, God's voice is always, always, you're better than that. Yep. It's always. calling you up. It's calling he's, you higher. Jesus has never called me out, but he's called me up a million times. <laughs> I know. It's so true. That's the thing. The, the self-talk, the solutions that you come up with, all those things that come to you, where are they leading you and what is the end result? Literally, I think I've said it before recently because I've been thinking about it a lot, but when something is just a smidge off, you can't tell much at the beginning, but as it progresses, it becomes more and more obvious that that's not a healthy alternative. And I think a lot a lot of times we have to do that with the, the discussions that we have. Apparently some people don't have discussions in their head. So I'm not talking to you because so I don't weird. understand you, but so the people, weird. those of us who have conversations, running dialogues in our head, you have to check that conversation and see where is that conversation leading you? Is it leading to you to your own death and destruction or is it calling you up higher to something greater and being a greater person than, than what you thought that you could be? Yeah. If you hear you're better than that, that's God. If you hear, how God, could you, you? Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to say that's the devil. That could be your cultural conditioning. It could be a lot of things, but anything that, that takes away your courage that you're going to overcome whatever it is you're battling is not from God. Mm-hmm. And you don't necessarily even have to be a Christian to know that. Period. You don't have to be a Christian to know that it's not from God. Because mm-hmm. I believe that God operates with people whether or not they're Christians. Mm-hmm. But um, there's a lot of times when, and that's a phrase that we use all the time in the house, is we don't do that in this family. That's not what we do. Mm-hmm. And this is what we do. And you represent us. You're... It's about that. It's about your honor, and it's about the fact that you are better than all that, and yep. we're not going to quit on you, yep. and uh, we're going to love you, and that's it. But a lot of people from religious context don't um, don't get that type of feeling. What I loved about this song, though, is that this guy, one, he's being honest, two, he's being hopeful, three, he's being accountable. Because he's saying it's my issues. He doesn't blame anybody. Mm -hmm. Doesn't blame his dad. Doesn't blame his mom. Doesn't blame society. Doesn't try to look at other people's shit. He's just owning his own shit. But at the same, but he's, but also he's active in trying to change. Yeah. Um, Just a lot of really cool, 
a lot of really cool lessons for this um for the for from this song and i'd I'd have to read this part too he says my outcry for life is swallowed by the night i'm being hopeful for once the sunrise i seek is moments from my eyes and then he said gazing upon the sky longing for the departure of the night which has not been his norm yeah like he's been kind of wallowing in the night and he's saying now he's looking at the sky he's longing for the departure of the night he said i'm being dragged away into the endless night without putting up a fight so that's what he was doing before but now he's instead of getting dragged away into the night now he's looking for the dawn and he's headed toward that yeah and i think you know obviously i got like a bunch of goosebumps during this song multiple multiple times it's extremely timely also yes you know once again the streams are extremely timely (laughs) yes it's a very bizarre (laughs) um so really good 9.5 for me mm, no no this one's an 11 for me because it's a spirit it went spiritual whoa it went spiritual and I I can't tell you how you know like I like the songs like you know everything sucks people equal shit all that stuff you know like those are fun and those have their place but you cannot stay in that place right it will literally wreck you. There will be nothing left, and you'll you'll probably want to end your own life. It's not a good place to stay in for long periods of time. Sometimes, you know, you kind of get kicked off your feet, and you're on the ground for a little bit, but you got to get back up. And so this, to me, was like, okay, this is cool. Like, it was a heavy song. The The guy was very much into his the vocals. He was singing it. It was They were just very into it. And, and you could tell, you know, they were feeling it. I just, I loved it. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna answer this one question and then and then we're gonna bounce out of this particular review. Stay tuned. How does the fear of the Lord as the beginning of the wisdom fit? Is the translation jacked up? Okay, so um, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. With uh, why do people go on roller coasters? For the fear and the right? fun. Um, what's cool about a roller coaster is that all of us desire that novelty, even danger. Mm-hmm. And what a roller coaster is, is we're going to push you to the very brink of death. Because <laughs> all of us know when you go up four or 500 feet into the air and you drop down, you're going to die. Right. So that's what they're replicating. They're replicating a death, but you're strapped in with seat belts. So, so the instinctual part of you, the, the evolved part of you, that's just, that's just about survival, mm-hmm. right? From a Darwinian point of view is saying, ah, right? And then the other side of you, the transcendental side of you, the side of you that is grasping for novelty and danger and all that, which is contrary to the desires of your survival self, are are now harmonized in this roller coaster, right? Mm-hmm. And when you're going down in the roller coaster, you say that's thrilling or it's fun. Why do we watch thrillers? The reason is we love the danger safety aspect simultaneously. So when it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, what it means is that excitement that you have about the roller coaster is almost completely subsumed because of the fear. Mm -hmm. But you go on it because you're safe. So when it says the fear of the Lord, what, what God is saying is don't be bored with me. Right. So like, for example, we're all talking, we're hanging out. If there was a giant explosion in your house, ha- outside of your house, and there was a giant fire, like look how mesmerizing a fire is. Mm-hmm. Like it's mesmerizing, it's hypnotic, and you want to get closer to it, but you also know that it's extremely dangerous and not something to play with. And so, but you want to stay a safe distance. So again, there's that safety and, and terror simultaneously. To us, we're fully alive, right? And so that's how I look at the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord to me is. One, may you always be distracted by God. In other words, you know, like I said, if there was a big explosion and, and there was a fire outside or a UFO landed, everybody would be like, yeah, I'm done talking. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. see this UFO. So one is like, you should always be distracted by God if you have the fear of the Lord. And the second is, you're always thrilled or excited by God. Like, honestly, I'm not going to lie. Like, every time I open the Bible, I get this little tinge of like excitement because I know I'm going to find out something about him that I did mm-hmm. not know before. Mm-hmm. I, I've I've read the same story. I've talked about Adam and Eve fifty trillion times. Literally every single time, there's always some weird new insight that that I get. And so, to me, that's the fear of the Lord. Um, we know that God doesn't mean for us to be terrified of Him, because in the one of the last books of the Bible, we're told there's uh, um, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has to do with torment. Right. And the one who fears hasn't been perfected in love. So. God is telling us, look, fear me in the roller coaster bonfire sense, mm-hmm. but don't fear me in the 
abusive dad sense right. like, that I'm going to torment right. you. Right. God doesn't want that from us, actually. Yeah. He actually juxtaposes love with fear, not hate. So what God is saying is, no, don't fear me that way. Fear me in the roller coaster bonfire way. I don't want to be feared that way. Yeah, 100%. It's like a, a stove in your house. Like we all have stoves in our house and we have a healthy fear of them to know we're not going to stick our hand on it when it's running. You don't leave it running with a pot of oil and leave the house. There's uh, an understanding that you have of the the chaos or destruction that can come from it if you don't stay within the certain guidelines of it. And I think that you know, God has set up the world in a certain way and we have the choice to, to go along with that or to deviate from that. But either either path that you choose, you're going to reap either the chaos of the, the fire or you're going to you're going to get the benefits of the fire, which is cook your meal. And you know yeah. what I'm saying, like it can be one or the other. And you, you kind of make that decision. Yeah. Yeah. And, and no doubt, Applejack, I'll hit you up on Twitter. Uh, we'll we'll chat for sure. And maybe you can help me, too. Right. Because every time I talk to somebody about God, you know. We help each other, right? Mm-hmm. So I'll come with the little crumbs that I have. You come with what you have, and we'll figure it out together, huh? Okay, really good song. A little bit of a long review. Sorry, guys. You know how we get down. It's Vin and Sorry. What are you going to do? Um, at the end of the day, look, whether you're a Christian or not, think about what I said. Don't dwell too much in guilt. Some of you have done stuff that you can't reverse. I got some ex-military folks here, right? So trust me, I, I know, right? Um, but we've only got two options. We either forgive ourselves and move on and, and be good for everybody around us or we hang out in guilt and we're useful to nobody. <laughs> right? So that's how I feel about it. Anyway, 9.5 for me, 11 for Soraya. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.